Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, this is one of the final presentations of this KubeCon, and I, and I really hope you all are not too tired. Well, at least I am tired, but I hope we can make it worthwhile for you. This session is going to be about inspecting your gateway API configuration. My name is Gaurav, and I'm a software engineer at Google, where I work in the GK networking team. I am also an active contributor to the Gateway API project and a maintainer of Gateway Cuddle. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Mattia Lavacca, and I'm a software engineer working at Kong, and I'm a Gateway API maintainer. So uh, our main aim with today's presentation is to empower you all with the tools and knowledge that you need to easily work with the Gateway API. How we're going to be going about doing that is we'll be setting up the stage. For example, we'll start out with giving you a background about what the precursor of Gateway API looked like. Yes, I'm talking about our very own Ingress API. We'll be discussing what the limitations of the Ingress API were. And then we'll be moving on to how Gateway API solves most or almost all of those limitations. After that, we'll be doing a deep dive of all the complexities or all the challenges that you may run into while working with the Gateway API and look at possible solutions on how you can overcome those challenges. So yeah, let's get started with, uh, with the Ingress. I, I guess that all of you already know about Ingress. What is Ingress? What's, well, it's, it's a very well-known API and very widely used API, right? So Ingress, it's very well used. And it's simple because it's a Kubernetes core API, which means that if you create a new Kubernetes cluster, you have your Ingress API there, just ready to be used. And it's also simple. You can just create an Ingress resource. You, well, of course, you, you need to have an Ingress class uh, installed in your cluster, but you just create an Ingress and everything works of course, you also need to have an Ingress implementation installed in your cluster. But there are some downsides with Ingress. The first one was the lack of core features. So basically, when Ingress has been designed, um, the feature set wasn't completed. Uh, so it wasn't complete. And this led to the creation of custom extensions everywhere, uh, a lot of annotations, implementation-specific annotations, and this led to the lack of portability. So basically, if you had an ingress configuration, an ingress-based configuration um, for a specific implementation, it was very hard and complex to migrate to using another different uh, Ingress implementations, right? Because all of the annotations were implementation specific. Another problem of Ingress was the lack of protocol diversity because Ingress is L7 only, it's only HTTP. And also there was an insufficient permission model. There is one resource, the Ingress, you can only create that, and yeah, everything has to be working that way. Then Gateway API has been introduced and has been designed to be a personas-focused model, which means that there are multiple personas involved in the Gateway API. And the Gateway API is modular, and it has a, a hierarchical structure, which means that there is the Gateway class, which is the root of your resource tree. Then there is the Gateway that references the Gateway class, and you have the routes. And each of these layer is managed by different personas. There is the infrastructure provider, the cluster operator, and the application developer. So it's flexible, it's extensible by design, it has been designed to be, uh, to be extensible, and it's also portable because it has been designed, again, uh, not to be enriched with custom, uh, custom annotations or uh, implementation specific features, but it has been designed to be, to have a wider feature set compared to Ingress, right? And it has also a very large community support. So far we have uh, over 25 implementations, just less than 30, but yeah, it, 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 it's very, it's very, very, very well supported. This is a very quick example about how HTTP route and Ingress differ. Basically, the HTTP route is the corresponding resource of the ingress in the Gateway API realm. 
these resources, are, these resources are, are kind of the same. So you have a host name, foo.example.com, you have a match rule uh, on dash, dash slash login, and a service, a backend service. For example, if you want to improve your HTTP route by adding an additional host name, it's very easy in the, in the HTTP route object because you can just create another host name in the host name's uh, array, and yeah, it's done. While for the ingress, you have to create an entire new rule just for the sake of the new host name that you want to add. And this is, this is only a very simple example of how Gateway API can be more uh, powerful and more expressive than Ingress API, right? So, so far, the, you just need to use Gateway API, right? Gateway API is great, Gateway API is perfect, yes it is. Not that much because it's great, it has been designed very well, but because of all that um, flexibility, you get a lot of complexity, right? This is an example. Uh, this is a graph of the interaction between the multiple modules of the Gateway API object. So you have the Gateway class that is referenced by a gateway with multiple routes uh, that reference a single backend, but then you have cross namespace references can be kind of a mess. So you have multiple resources, and again, very good, very good flexibility, but also high level of complexity. So it can be a little bit overwhelming, right? But yeah, this is, this is the reason why we're here. So we are here to help you uh, tackle this problem and this complexity. Uh, so our solution to all of these challenges and all of these complexities is something called as Gateway Cuttle. What is Gateway Cuttle? Well, Gateway Cuttle is a command line tool which is designed specifically for the Gateway API. It understands what all the Gateway API resources mean, so it can give you a more tailored response. Uh, another thing which may need some clarity after today is family feud, so that people don't get some wrong ideas. This is going to be pronounced as Gateway Cuttle and not something else. Uh, Gateway Cuttle was initially bundled or initially included in the Gateway API repo, but now it's moved into its own repo, so if you're looking to contribute or get involved, please check out this repo. And also, we recently hit our very first major milestone with an official release of version 0.1.0. <coughs> now, I'm, I'm pretty sure of, all of you must be having this question in your mind by why Cube Cuttle wasn't enough. Why did we decide to build the Gateway Cuttle? Well, to answer that, let's look at what kubectl is good with. kubectl is good with handling Kubernetes core APIs. What I mean by Kubernetes core APIs, I mean things like pods, deployments, services, something like config maps, or maybe something like CRDs. Now, as it happens, Gateway API is the first official Kubernetes API which was built on top of CRDs. So in a way, it's not a Kubernetes core API, and that means that kubectl doesn't have the intrinsic knowledge or it doesn't understand what a gateway class means or an HTTP route means. For, for it, all of these are just another CRD, and it treats it in a very generic fashion. This is where gateway cuttle shines. So gateway cuttle understands what a gateway class would mean, what a reference graph would mean, and in this way, it can provide you like some more intelligent responses. So what can Gateway Cuddle do for you? Well, you can list resources like Gateway Classes. You can fetch HTTP routes in a particular namespace or other resources. You can get gateways from maybe a particular label. You can even fetch the YAMLs of these resources. You can get multiple resources at once. You can do a combination of all of the above. You can even create resources with Gateway Cuddle. You have another different way of creating resources. You can delete the resources which you just created. You can delete gateways by a name. Uh, I'm pretty sure all of you would be wondering that this is, isn't, doesn't this look very similar? Isn't kubectl already able to handle all of these things for you? And you are absolutely right. kubectl is able to handle all of these things. But all of the things that we discussed so far are just the beginning. And we'll talk about how you can actually use gateway kubectl. 
Yeah, so basically, as we saw at the beginning of the presentation of Gateway PI, Gateway PI has a modular approach, right? You have multiple elements, which are gateway class, gateway, routes, services, eventually policies. So, it, which means that you have a lot of references from all the objects, right? So, you have this kind of, of a tree, and it can be complex to identify, for example, I don't know, which gateways are referenced by which HTTP routes, which services are referenced by which HTTP routes, or something like cross namespace references, because with kubectl, you don't have such, the, such a possibility. Because with, with kubectl, you don't have the possibility to set up a, an overview of a CRD. Basically, we would just like to have a, cube, a, a, a describe for the CRDs, right? So this is the very first uh, command that we will take a look uh, at. So basically, with the dash, dash o wide option for the get command, you can just get, for example, the routes that uh, <clears throat> reference a specific service, or you can see how many HTTP routes reference a specific gateway, or the gateway is referencing a gateway class. Um, and also you have gateway cattle describe, which is what I was talking about before, right? So if you describe a gateway, you are able to see how many and which routes are referencing that gateway. And also you are able to see which backends are eventually referenced by those routes. The same goes for the services. So you can describe the services and you are able to see which are the routes that are referring those services as backends. So basically, you can build the, your, your, entry, your, your entire tree of resources just by getting and describing. Also, a problem of having all these uh, um, references scattered across the whole API is the fact that you can have broken links. So you can have an HTTP route you can create such, a, such an HTTP route uh, with a backend reference, but the, the service referenced doesn't exist at all. So that's a problem, and that can be kind of complex to be discovered just with, cube, just with kubectl. So gateway kubectl uh, helps you again. You can describe the gateways, and in the analysis section, you are able to see all the problems in your configurations such as, for example, the fact that the gateway name default to demo gateway one references a non-existing gateway class, which is a pretty complex problem, right? Or also the fact that your HTTP route is referring a backend that doesn't exist at all. Also, another layer of complexity on top of all of these modules is the, cross, is the management of cross namespace um, references, because in the Gateway API, I am able to reference a service, for example, from an HTTP route uh, in, a, in a completely different namespace. But this has to be specifically enabled by the existence of a reference grant in the referenced namespace. So let's say that I have a, a, an HTTP route that uh, references a service in another uh, namespace, but I didn't create the reference grant to explicitly allow such a reference. Well, if I just type gateway cattle describe for that specific HTTP route, in the analysis section, I have the possibility to figure out which is the actual problem. And without this gateway cattle describe, just by using kubectl, this kind of problematic is, is complex, to, is tricky to, to figure out what's wrong in your configuration. And this is yet another layer of complexity, which is policies. Policies are meta resources, which means that uh, are resources that can be used to modify or enhance the behavior of other Gateway API resources, right? So let's say that you have the usual tree of resources, Gateway class, Gateway, route, and service. You may want to attach a policy maybe on a gateway level, maybe at the HTTP route level, or at the service level, just to customize different behaviors of your tree of resources. And again, this is kind of complex to figure out which, which are the policies affecting 
the uh, gateway or the HTTP route that we are that we are looking into. So you can just get all the policies with Gateway Cattle. Starting from the right, you have the policy type, which is something that Gaurav is, is going to be talking about in a couple of minutes. Then we have the target kind. So the policy is affecting maybe the gateway, maybe the HTTP route, maybe the service. Then you have the kind of the policy and, well, of course, the name of the policy. When it comes to the kind of a policies, uh, there are two kinds of policies. Actually, the first one is the Gateway API maintained policies. So far in the Gateway API repository, we have two policies, the backend TLS policy and backend load balancer policy. But also you can have implementation specific policies. I don't know, implementation X can, can choose to implement a specific, a specific policy for customizing uh, the behavior of the routing in some, spe in some specific situation. So Gateway, Gateway PI can be customized with policies and so uh, implementations can choose to implement policies according to the uh, Gateway PI um, specification. And to do so, they basically need to add a, C a label on the CRD to tell Gateway Cattle, hey, this is a policy, and they want you to give me all the information about this specific policy. This is, for example, uh, what it happens when you uh, describe an HTTP route with a policy attached. You can see that in the directly attached policies, you have the policies that are affecting that specific resource. Uh, so we just saw how policies can be used to extend or augment the behavior of existing resources. But that is not the end of policies. Policies have another level of sophistication, uh, which means that, which, is, which inherits in the form of policy inheritance. So what does policy inheritance mean? As the name implies, it means that the policies that you apply to some resource in your hierarchy can actually affect some other resources or some child resources in your hierarchy. Let's, look, let's take a look at an example over here. So if let's say someone like a cluster operator were to attach a policy, a timeout policy to a gateway, this will actually influence the behavior for how the gateway will be forwarding traffic to a service. A service usually happens to be something which is owned by an application developer. So in, it is in the application developer's interest to be able to figure out or to be able to know what all policies are affecting its behavior, and if there any are, then maybe they can take some appropriate action. Gateway Cuttle describes again to, to your rescue. It can actually help you figure out what are all the inherited policies which are affecting the behavior of your resource. So in the example over here, if I were to do Gateway Cuttle describe of all of the services, and then I check out the inherited policy section, it will give me information about, for example, that a timeout policy is applied to a specific gateway class, which I'm associated with, and that a timeout policy is applied to, let's say, the namespace that the service belongs to. And that is still not the end of policies. Policies have yet another level of complexity or another dimension of complexity in the form of, in the form like, what happens when multiple policies are applied to individual resources in the hierarchy. Let's take a look at another example. So let's say, continuing our previous example, a cluster operator decides to attach a timeout policy to the gateway. In addition to that, the application developers also decide to attach their own timeout policy to a service. The natural question which this leads to is, what happens in this scenario? How do these policies, how do these multiple policies get combined? Well, the Gateway API specification answers this question and actually describes something called as effective policies. So effective policies are basically the set of rules which define how multiple policies of similar kind, which are attached at different levels in the hierarchy, are supposed to be combined. I won't be going into the depths of how you're supposed to actually manually calculate this because that is exactly where Gateway Cuttle will be helping you with. So with Gateway Cartel Describe, you can actually calculate the effective policy which gets applied to your resource. So again, using the same example, if I were to do the Gateway Cartel Describe of my services, then within the effective policy section, I should be able to see all the effective policies that my 
service is, uh, service is under the influence of. If my service happens to be a part of multiple gateways, then the effective policy section will actually be showing you the effective policy calculation for each of the gateways which the service is associated with. And if there are multiple policies applied, multiple kinds of policies applied to several resources, then the effective policy will actually show you the effective policy calculation for each of those individual types of resources. Uh, another common thing which you may be running into is, or you may be feeling uneasy about is when you're actually applying your changes. It would be so nice if you could actually maybe somehow get some kind of a safeguard or some kind of a safety check when you're applying your changes so that you don't cause some kind of a disruption. Well, Gateway Cuttle has that covered for you as well. With the Gateway Cuttle analyze function, you can actually do some kind of a dry run of what you're about to apply, and it can actually help you decide if you want to move ahead with your changes or not. So some of the things which Gateway Cuttle can actually, Gateway Cuttle analyze will actually help you with is it will show you a summary of all the changes which will get applied as a result of the command that you're about to run. For example, it can tell you what are the resources that will be created, what are the resources which will get updated, and stuff like that. It can also actually help you figure out or uh, show you some potential issues which may get introduced as, as a result of moving forward with your changes. It would also indicate what are the existing issues which may get fixed if you move forward with your changes. And in a similar manner, it will actually also tell you if there were any existing issues which were already present and those are still not fixed even after applying your changes. Are you all drowning in a sea of YAMLs? Uh, I understand that reading through a bunch of YAMLs to figure out maybe at a high level what your gateway API resources look like, how they are interconnected, that can be quite challenging. What if there was something which can give you a high level overview or a big picture of how all of these resources are laid out, how all of these resources are topologically laid out? Well, Gateway Cuttle can actually help you out with this again so that you don't have to parse through all of this stuff. With the Gateway Cuttle, with the Gateway Cuttle get gateway dash o graph option, you can actually get a dot graph representation of all of your Gateway API resources. Uh, now, this dot graph representation, you can actually render through some online visualization tools like Graphis, and it can actually help you lay down or decide or figure out like how your stuff is actually looking like. So let's take a look at some of the examples of, or some of the ranges of, some examples of how visualization can help you. So for example, from simple stuff like this to maybe more vastly complex stuff like this, this is how Gateway Cuttle can actually empower you to maybe understand or better able to uh, figure out where some problems may be lying. So I think we've covered a lot. Let's do a very quick recap of what all we have covered so far. So we saw what were the limitations of the Ingress API and we saw how that led to the evolution of the Gateway API. We understood and acknowledged the complexities that one has to deal with when they are working with the Gateway API. Most of those have to do with the multi-resource model of Gateway API. And Following that, we understood the need for Gateway Cuttle, and we saw how Gateway Cuttle can actually help you solve some of these challenges. For example, it can help you figure out which resources are being targeted by your resource, or which resources are targeting your resource. It can help you figure out things like, are you referencing an invalid resource, or maybe you don't have the permissions to reference a valid resource. It can also help you figure out things like calculating effective policies for you, maybe, and all of this policies related stuff. It can actually help you apply changes safely in a safe manner by using the Gateway Cuttle Analyze. And it can also help you visualize your things using the Dash O Graph option. Uh, in an ideal world, you would never have to use something like Gateway Cuttle. In that perfect world, maybe something like Cube Cuttle would have been sufficient for you, or maybe something like some, some other kind of built-in mechanism would have been sufficient which never, had, which never made you use something like Gateway Cuttle. Sadly, we don't live in that perfect world. The Gateway API today is evolving at a very fast pace. The Gateway maintainers and the Gateway community are continuously working to simplify how the user experience would look like. I definitely hope to see a future where we don't have to use Gateway Cuttle, but until that future vision becomes a reality, Gateway Cuttle is there to empower you today. It can help you out with solving some of the challenges which you'll be working out today. 
and make your life easier. Yeah. As Gaurav said at the beginning of the presentation of Gateway Cattle, we just released version 0.1.0. And so Gateway Cattle is a very fresh project. And this is the this is the exhaustive list of all the contributors for uh, Gateway Cattle. Uh, this is, I think, in my opinion, that the Gateway Cattle is a great starting point for anyone who is interested in getting in touch with the Gateway API community. Because uh, if you are interested in that, maybe starting from um, writing a gap for the Gateway API or conformance tests or anything can be a little bit tricky, right? But when it comes to touch something in a CLI tool can be a very good starting point for you. And it's also very beneficial for us because we need your help. So if you are interested in participating in moving forward Gateway Cattle, yeah, this is the QR code. You can just go on the repository and feel free to get in touch or Slack or whatever because yeah, we, we really need you. This is the very last point of this, of this talk. It's kind of unrelated with Gateway Cattle, but yeah, we created a Gateway API survey because we need user feedback. So it doesn't really matter if you are an application developer, cluster operator, we really need to know what you like, what you don't like uh, about the Gateway API. So uh, if you are, again, if you are a Gateway API user, please go on the QR code or the link and yeah, answer the, the, the few questions that we, cre that we created uh, because we just want to get better and to make Gateway API even more successful. Thank you, everybody.